Now that Hurricane Laura has left this area, it's left nothing but piles of debris on the side of the roads and houses without roofs like this one here, leaving many people asking the same question. What should they do next? Where do we go? from here. So what if I decide to have a house party with 10 of my closest friends and wanted to know just how much of a risk it is to have all these people here? I can only imagine what the people here were feeling when they were going through this, but a lot of devastation, a lot of destruction. We got our posters, some tape, arts and crafts, and gave an opportunity for others waiting in line to share their thoughts just to ring away. Hi, how are you doing? I'm all good. Good. My name is Cassie Sherm. I'm a news reporter with News 15. Thanks for calling me. Now we're on a generator here at the prison. And so, yeah, guys, really, really bad rain. It is not something you want to be out of. Right now, we're learning about several cases of mumps on LSU's campus. According to the LSU Student Health Center and the Louisiana Department of Health, five cases have been confirmed. Well, Brian, we really don't have too much more information other than it is an officer involved shooting. And as you guys can see around me, we're completely surrounded by law enforcement. Now for our crime watch this morning, we have an update to a story we brought you yesterday. One man is behind bars in connection with the shootings that took place on Wednesday night in Jennings. Here in Lake Arthur, many people woke up to broken limbs just thrown all across their yard, while others woke up to this, walking out of their home and seeing their home almost destroyed. In the middle of Hickman Street, and yes, that's right, we're on a canoe right now. Many people in this area heard, saw, and even felt the crash, and then saw the plane exploding into flames. Now, if you guys want to try to make it yourself, it's pretty easy, and doctors say it's just as effective in Candace, so we have three ingredients to do. So That's we have all, just three ingredients. Just three ingredients. So we have this rubbing alcohol here, aloe vera, and then essential oils if you want it to smell good. For this story, I got out of the house, brought my pen and notebook, and we're counting just how many people are wearing or not wearing masks. Our first stop, a big chain grocery store. Hi, sorry to bother you guys. I'm a reporter with News 15. Finally, when you do get to sit down on one of these machines, a lot of casinos, they're putting up flexiboard glass like this one here to help you social distance. But what's out of the ordinary is actually how high this water is right here. I spoke to the owner of this dock, and he was telling me normally during a tropical depression or any kind of hurricane season, the water from the bay here is pushed out and goes towards the gulf into the storms. When you open up the store, and throw your mask in here is actually a big mistake. It could start a blaze. With a bippity boppity boo, girls are dressed up and ready to go to prom. A local company that's doing a lot more than just spraying things down and wiping things off. That's all the information we have for you right now, Brian. but as soon as we learn more information, we're gonna keep you guys updated on air and online at KADN.com. Back to Brian. All right, thank you, Cassie. A lot going in back and forth cars. Cassie, be safe out there. Well, I sat down with a Lafayette nurse while she was giving her antibodies, and she says it's a super easy thing to do to help save a life. There was a point where I thought, my body's failing, I'm not going to make it. Karen Weibel, a Lafayette general nurse, became very ill back in February. It escalated to 103 fever, excruciating headache, lower back ache that was intolerable. But at that time, no one was talking about COVID-19 here in Louisiana. Every test I took was negative. And the scariest part for me was not knowing what was happening to me. Weeks later, the first case of coronavirus was diagnosed in the state, but it wasn't until last week that Weibel was able to take an antibody test at work to see if that's what she had. I came back positive. And I was relieved <laughs> to know, you know, what was wrong with me because it was emotional, everything was negative, but my body was failing. That same week, she donated her plasma to help others, and now she's back at it again. I always knew I wanted to be a nurse since a little girl because I wanted to help others and give. To be able to give something you have back to heal people, it's an amazing thing. The process to give takes about two hours. Please, please, please. And Weibel says anyone can do it. Being on this machine and giving is not 
anything compared to the symptoms of the coronavirus. And once more people are tested in the area, she thinks others will join her. I know as people become positive and realize that they have an opportunity to give, they'll be given their plasma. So Weibel is resting easy. You sit back and just say, okay, I'm going to give now. Knowing that she can make a difference. You got a good amount? Oh yeah, we're good. One donation at a time. How many people can we save with that one? At least four. At least four. Isn't that awesome? If you'd like to join her and others who are donating their plasma to COVID-19 patients who are currently in the hospital, you can go to vitalent.org where you can fill out the paperwork and they'll set you up with a time and an appointment. In Lafayette, I'm Cassie Sherm, News 15. But this is something that the family of Trayford say they did not want to happen. Really, all they say they really want right now is the truth and just to know what happened to Pellerin. My family is hurting. It's hurting. Tracy Pellerin, Trayford's aunt, says they're looking for answers that led up to his death. Right. Yep. What caused it? Nobody know what happened. Nobody know. That's all we see is right here in the store where he was gunned down. Louisiana state troopers say police responded to a call about a man carrying a knife near a North Lafayette convenience store. Now a video that's going viral on social media captures what happened next. Wait, we got to witness this. We have to witness this. Now warning, this video is graphic. In the video, a man can be seen walking away from police towards the gas station while a handful of officers follow him, tasing him. The video then pans for a second, and then you hear this. He goes fast. Oh, oh my God. Roughly 11 shots can be heard fired. When the camera view returns to the gas station, the man is shown lying down on the pavement, motionless, surrounded by police officers. They literally just killed this man in front of me. Pellerin was taken to the hospital, but then declared dead, leaving his family heartbroken with many questions. Don't. We need answers. Like they had alternative means. Why didn't they take it? And that's what the family attorneys Ben Crump and Ronald Haley plan to find out. Why not wound him? Why not one shot to the leg? Why not they communicate while they're out there and say, I'm going to shoot him in the leg to stop him? We will apprehend him after that. That's the answers that this mother needs to be able to rest at night. Why is that? And then when we get those answers, it's not just to say, I'm sorry, to cut a check. What are we going to do differently? We need policy changes. We need accountability. That's why we need transparency from the police department immediately so that a mother can rest. Now, if you do have any information on what happened, the family is begging people to come forward. I'm asking for anything. If you want to send anything anonymously to myself, my family, please do so. Until the truth comes out, their attorneys say they won't stop. We don't sleep. We don't sleep. Injustice doesn't sleep, and we don't either. If you don't have a bike, you may run into some problems because everyone is having the same idea. Oh, City Cycle, may I help you? It's an endless cycle of phone calls at Hub City Cycle from people all looking for the same thing. But with every call, Megan Arsenault, the owner, has the same answer. Um, no, but I can pre-order you some. We're getting a lot of calls. The phone doesn't stop. Since the pandemic started two months ago, Hub City Cycles has sold more than 250 bikes. I would sell about maybe 300 bikes a year. So in the last two months, I've almost met my quota for the year. With the high demand for bikes. Because everybody across America wants a bike. And China's production's halted, causing a chain reaction. Finding a bike in Acadiana or really anywhere across the United States is hard to come by. So I tell people I laugh and they don't believe that they really have to pre-order their bikes. I'm like, just think about it when you went to go to the store right when, you know, COVID hit. It's just like toilet paper, you know. You can only, <laughs> there's only so much and we are limited into how much we're getting. Keeping the guys in the back repairing bikes constantly busy. We've been slammed. Uh, this is constant, you know, it's uh, as much as we breathe, we're doing repair right now. Dustin Gospa says he understands why so many people want to go out and ride. I think sunshine is like the best healing that we can get and uh, that's what the bike helps you with. So. But because of that, you'll more than likely have to pre-order a bike 
if you're going to buy one. It's going to be a little bit different than what you're used to, but I promise you, if you're patient, you will be on two wheels before you know it. Arsenault says it's the high demand that's making them essential during this pandemic. We're just rolling with it. So if you plan to buy a bike, you better order it now because the owner of this store says the later you wait, the longer you'll be waiting, possibly till the end of the summer to get a bike. In Lafayette, I'm Cassie Sherm, News 15. Now during this pandemic, family members have not been allowed to see their loved ones who are battling COVID-19 back behind me here. So to share his love and support, Kay Pelican has been coming here every day since his wife was admitted into ICU to bring her flowers, but also just sit in the parking lot, praying that she'll get better. I see it every day. Why it couldn't have been me instead of her? For the past 13 days, Kay's wife, Shanelli, has been fighting for her life against COVID-19. Here outside, I, I can't go in. All I can do is just look up at the window and just, you know, just wait. And it's, it, it's, it's, it's so hard, you know, it's so hard. But that hasn't stopped him from being there. My wife is a big cheese ball. She, she loves flowers. My way of dealing with it, being that I can't be there, I just decided to start sending flowers. The couple has been in love for over 20 years and married for more than 18. Got to the point to where she can finish my sentence and I finish hers sometime. This coming to September the 8th, it will make 19. So he goes every day with flowers in hand for Chanelli and a treat for the nurses. He walks in and seconds later walks out into the parking lot to see his wife's room window. I love her and I miss her, you know. Then he waits for the nurse's call, the only way he knows how Chanelli is doing. Hello? Hey, Mr. K, this is Lindsay calling from ICU. I just want to call and give you a little update. And by the way, um, she got her rose and we got that cake that was so kind of you. You're welcome. We are going to um, start weaning her sedation as much as we can and then wean the ventilator as well. Uh -huh. um, she looks even better than she did yesterday to me. It's news that gives Kay hope. It's, it's much easier to sleep when you get a comforting from them telling you, oh, she's, she's making good progress. So today he leaves the hospital breathing a little easier. To know that she know I'm out here doing what I'm doing. I'm thinking that's just making her come back full, you know, come back strong. Now he says, even though these flowers are a small gesture, it leaves a big impact, showing that love has no restrictions, even during a pandemic. In Lafayette, I'm Cassie Sherm, News 15. Our top story this evening, small in size, but big in controversy. Face masks have become one of the most hotly debated issues in America, and Acadiana is no exception. As our region leads the resurgence of coronavirus cases in Louisiana, many people are urging Lafayette government and even the governor of the state to enforce a mask mandate to stop the spread. News 15's Cassie Sherm takes a look at why Lafayette won't have a mask mandate and why this issue is so divisive. Cassie? Well, Candace, it's masks like this one here that's a hot topic here in Lafayette as an online petition circles around with thousands of people asking the mayor president to create a mask mandate here in Lafayette like other areas and parishes in the state. Well, we spoke to the mayor president and he says he has no plans of making a mask mandate here in Lafayette because he says he can't enforce it. Masks in public is not going to drive down our level of transmission unless the great majority of people, 80, 90 percent of people in the community wear masks. Time and time again, Acadiana COVID Task Force leader Dr. Tina Stefanski and health officials here in Louisiana say masks are needed to stop the spread. We'll never get to, to decrease transmission unless, again, the great, we have to, we're going to have to have great compliance. So for you to, for two people, you know, for people to say, well, I'm not going to wear a mask, but you can, um, it doesn't help our community. Governor John Bell Edwards says he won't do a statewide mask mandate because he's following the White House Coronavirus Task Force guidance, where local government has a say. And that guidance uh, is directed with respect to mask mandates to local government, not state government, in those areas where you have increasing cases and increasing positivity. So far, New Orleans, Jefferson Parish, Kenner, East Baton Rouge Parish, and Shreveport have issued a mask mandate in businesses. We have had uh, more hospitalizations right now uh, than at the highest point before. 
Um, so for public health reasons and to continue to save lives, uh, save our livelihoods in the long term, I uh, made the decision. Shreveport Mayor Adrian Perkins says the response has been mainly positive. You know, I have some citizens that are upset and saying, hey, masks are uncomfortable and it's infringing on their rights. But, um, you know, ultimately, everybody is happy that I made the decision and, and we know that we're going to be safer as a community. The Constitution is being shredded before our very eyes. State Representative Danny McCormick is one of the people who opposes this mandate. People who don't wear a mask will be soon painted as the enemy, just as they did the Jews in Nazi Germany. Now is the time to push back before it's too late. But according to the constitutional lawyers at Baton Rouge, enforcing wearing a mask doesn't infringe on your rights. You have to balance three things, whether the state has a compelling interest, whether their, their law is narrowly tailored, and a third, whether it's the least restrictive thing they can do. And in this case, with regards to masks uh, and the requirement to, to wear it, I think that they meet all three of those uh, requirements. Even with the rise in cases and the repeated message from local health officials, Mayor President Josh Guillory says he will not enforce a mask mandate here in Lafayette. The enforceability of such a mandate uh, is, is not practical. Well, guys, here in Lake Arthur, we received a lot of wind damage, leaving many debris like this one here flown all across people's yards, while others had trees completely stumble fall over into power lines, into homes, some just inches away from homes, leaving many people here very thankful, thankful because this damage could be so much worse. Very blessed, very blessed, blessed to be alive. This morning, Rachel Matthews is counting her blessings as her, her husband, and her dog stuck out the storm in their living room. Uh, we heard like a little thump on the ceiling and the ceiling fan started shaking and then we started checking the walls and stuff and everything looked fine and, and we walked outside and that's where we faced the big old tree. Matthew says it could have been way worse. Eerie, because it could have just one little wind shift and that would have took my whole house out. Just one little wind shift. Now the Matthews house wasn't the only one hit. Here in Lake Arthur you can find trees snapped in half and power lines down for miles and many still stuck without power. We lost power at nine. Stephen Evans stuck out the storm in his home and heard and even felt the power of the high winds. I mean, you could just hear everything breaking. The house would actually move. You'd hear the wind and my chairs at the table would move. But luckily for him and many others, many of the trees barely missed homes, just causing damage to the property. Man, inches away from your home, that's all you can ask for. The damage may cost them money. Oh, probably about 40000 or more. But for the people here in Lake Arthur, they say a storm like this won't break their town. We were prepared for it. I mean, we could just move forward from here. I love you, Dad, you know, about a million times. And he kept saying, I love you bigger, Nisi, I love you bigger. And uh, he blew me a kiss. And um, it's just, I mean, nobody should have to go through that. It, it's just awful. That was the last time Denise would talk to her 79-year-old father, Dennis Richard, as his life was taken by COVID-19. You know, it just um, suffocates you, I guess, you know. Your lungs just shut down. No hugs or kisses goodbye, just a FaceTime call. We went from thinking Dad's going to be home in a couple days to we're never going to see him again. It breaks you. It really does. Even though they said their goodbyes, her and her family are still in shock. Unbelievable because my dad was literally our hero. Richard was a vet, a retired detective, and a man who loved his family. We did big old hound dog draw. It's Come a running his box. Just an amazing grandfather and father, um, great grandfather. This is something they never thought would happen to their family. I certainly would never have thought that he would get it or my mom would get it. They don't go anywhere here except for to my house, church, and that's about it. But now this is the hard new reality that's shattering families all across Louisiana. They go to the hospital. You cannot go with them. It doesn't matter how old or how young they are. Um, 
they're going to be alone. Now the family can't even get closure as his wife, daughter, and son-in-law are all now COVID-19 positive. We can't even honor this amazing man um, right now in a memorial service because we, you, you can't get together. We can't support each other. With COVID-19's death toll rising each day, Farasi doesn't want her father to be another number. He deserves to have his story told. He didn't deserve to die alone. If my family can, can quarantine right now and not break it as much as we need to be together, I think anybody can. Now the family is just left heartbroken with only memories. Looking at you. Memories of a man yep. who Farasi says still should have more time to spend with his family. I love you bigger.